Good evening, and welcome to our Good Friday service at St. Mark's Episcopal Church in LaGrange, Georgia. Today, I welcome you from the south side of the church, just outside the church building, and we begin our service with a bulletin that is found, um, that is found on the website and in the email that was sent to you. Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews and is offered by Jane Teaster. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The psalm of the day is Psalm 22 verses 1 through 21. Let us say together, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You can go ahead and go. I mean, you either have to stay or go, so it'll work out. Because um, I can figure it out. I don't think it's shaking too much. No, I think it's okay. okay. Our psalm for today is Psalm 22, verses 1 through 21. Let us say together. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, and are so far from my cry, and from the words of my distress? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and, and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads saying, he trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, many strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. We 
continue now with the Passion of Jesus Christ according to St. John. It was recorded earlier on Zoom with several participants whose voices I think you will recognize. Jesus went out with his disciples ac across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his, his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priest and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with him. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back, and he fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to feel, fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer and the Jewish police, arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching, and Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, you are not also one of Peter denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? If this man, this man, man were not a criminal, criminal, we would not, would not have, have handed, handed him, him over to you. you. Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted, not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? 
Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not, not this man, man but, but Barabbas. Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of the, King of the Jews. Jews. And striking him on the face, Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priest and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. We have we a law, law and according to that law, law, he ought to die. Because, because he is a plain son of God. God. And now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you, you release this man, man you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Hebrew Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. Away with him. Away with him. Crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carried the cross by himself. He went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side. With Jesus between them, Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not Do write, not write the, the king, king of the Jews, Jews but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast it 
to see, to see who will get who will it. This was to fill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you may also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things have occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There he is, in your bulletin, in the video as you read along with the Passion narrative. There's Judas, kissing Jesus on the cheek, betraying his friend and his teacher with a kiss. I call Judas his friend. Friend has betrayed friend before. Friend has betrayed friend since the beginning. Perhaps no friend has ever betrayed someone so undeserving. Perhaps no betrayal is as famous or as scorned. It was a betrayal, but it was friend betraying friend. No villain with a plot from the beginning. No master plan on Judas's part. How long he planned his betrayal, we don't know. Could he have possibly understood what he was putting into motion? We recently read the Gospel of John in our Bible study. At one point in the middle of that, one of us said, you know, Judas had a lot of faith in Jesus. Think about it. Judas followed Jesus because he believed that Jesus had power, power to overthrow the Roman Empire. He believed that the miracles and the power were signs that Jesus could do what seemed impossible. Judas believed in Jesus. He just didn't believe Jesus. 
Judas was a zealot. The zealots had been around for years. They rose up, they raised up a Messiah, and that Messiah would wind up dead. Judas worked hard to free his people. He put his life on the line to free the people of Israel from what seemed like the worst sort of oppression. And he believed that Jesus could help, that Jesus was the answer. He believed that Jesus was the Messiah, the King, the one who had come to restore Jerusalem and overthrow the empire. Listen close to what Jesus says. Listen close to Jesus all along the way. He has come to overthrow. He has come to destroy. He has come to set free. But Jesus is not focused on the Romans or even all of Israel. They are small potatoes. They are nothing. They are nothing compared to the empire he has come to overthrow compared to the breadth of salvation he has in mind. Think about that. Imagine a nation beyond America, beyond America and the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War. Imagine one nation so powerful that their roads extended to the edges of the world. Imagine an empire, a nation so powerful that to be a citizen of that nation would extend protection across the known world. And imagine Judas, listening to Jesus and hearing him say, I don't care about that. I don't care about overthrowing that. That is too small for me. Jesus did not come to overthrow the Roman Empire. He came to overthrow the empire of sin. Tonight, we participate in that. We are among those he has come to save. All people are among those he has come to save. We are among those who shall crucify him. All people are subject to the empire of sin. Tonight we see the cross. We see the awful truth about where we so often wind up. And we see the unbelievable truth about where God always puts himself on a cross, dying to take part in our death, dying not as a sacrifice, but as an offering. God, God, offering God's self to the whole world, not those who believe, not those who say the right prayer, not those who get it right in this lifetime, that would be too small a thing. The empire of sin is either overthrown or it is not. It is, either, it is either overthrown for all people or for none of us at all. Let us, in the words of the letter to the Hebrews, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Judas Judas did not. We didn't hear it in today's story, but Judas went off ashamed of what he had done. He believed that Jesus could overthrow the Romans, but he didn't have faith that Jesus could overthrow the empire of sin. He betrayed his friend, Judas did. He sinned greatly, and he despaired, as lost as a soul can be. Ruth Echtels imagines what happens next in her poem, The Ballad of the Judas Tree. In hell there grew a Judas tree, where Judas hanged and died, because he could not bear to see his master crucified. Our Lord descended into hell and found his Judas there, forever hanging on the tree, grown from his own despair. So Jesus cut his Judas down and took him in his arms, it was for this I came, he said, and not to do you harm. My father gave me twelve good men, and all of them I kept, though one betrayed and one denied, some fled and others slept. In three days' time I must return to make the others glad, but first I had to come to hell 
and share the death you had. My tree will grow in place of yours. Its roots lie here as well. There is no final victory without this soul from hell. So when we all condemn him as of every traitor worst, remember that of all his men, our Lord forgave him first. Jesus came to overthrow the empire of sin. He came to save us all. He came to save his Judas, his Judas. He came to save, even when we believe too small, even when we don't think it's possible, even when we put our hope in something else entirely. God came to save his Judas, me, you, the whole world. God came to save. Amen. Continue with the solemn collects. Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, and that all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity in witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers, and the people whom they serve, for Rob, our bishop, and all the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and people of the earth, and for those in authority among them. For Donald, the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind, for the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the wounded, and the crippled, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish. For those who face temptation, doubt, and despair. For the sorrowful and bereaved. For prisoners and captives, and those in mortal danger. We pray especially for nurses and doctors, all health care providers. We pray for those who lie in distress, not only from coronavirus, but also from other conditions that are less well served because of the pandemic. That God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, 
the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer. Let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ, for those who have never heard the word of salvation, for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples, for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us commit ourselves to God and pray for the grace of a holy life that with all who have departed this world and have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of joy, the joy of our Lord, and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. Amen. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, Look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For by virtue of your cross, joy has come to the whole world. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For by virtue of your cross, joy has come to the whole world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living 
pardon and rest to the dead. To your holy church, peace and concord. And to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen.